quizzed on them doesn't mean we're done with them. Those will come up again on the test. All right, a couple extra terms here to add to your vocabulary list. I'm actually putting two terms we're familiar with and coming up with a new one called a perpendicular bisector. What are we thinking about with perpendicular? 90. 90. Forms a right angle, right? Forms a right angle. And a word we haven't used in a quite a couple days, but bisector. What's a bisector do? Cuts it in half. Cuts, it usually cuts angles in half, but it can cut a segment in half, too, into two congruent ones. So this is what we're going to do right now. Given, we're going to draw this picture. We're going to be given, and this is how we want to do it. Line EF. So we're going to create a line EF is the, whoa, what, whoa, I've never, whoa, what's that symbol? Perpendicular. Okay, everyone remember that? Upside down T, that's the perpendicular symbol. Bisector of CD. So the first thing I just need you guys to draw, put the compasses down, just draw them. Line segment CD. All right, give me line segment CD, please. Line segment CD up above. And we are going to draw a line we are going to call EF that is a perpendicular bisector of CD. Okay, so it's got to be perpendicular, so it's got to form a what? Right angle. And it's got to be a bisector, so... It's got to cut CD in half. Let me see if you can draw EF right now. All right, where on your paper are you going to draw EF? All right, where on your paper are you going to draw EF? So it is perpendicular and bisecting CD. And make sure it's lying EF. Just draw. Let's see if you guys pick up this concept or not. I made a line, line. Some of you guys are drawing me rays and segments. Line EF. Make sure it's a line. Got a ray. Line, line. Line has arrows on them. Goes all the way through. I don't need anything fancy as far as the compass goes yet. Good, good. Okay. Most of us are rocking this right here. Take a look. With an E and an F on there. Now, some of you did, some of you didn't. I didn't expect you to, but it was great if you did. Markings. Number one, it was supposed to be perpendicular, which means it forms a? Okay, put a right angle symbol. That takes care of the perpendicular part. Bisector, you said it was doing what to CD? Cutting it into two equal parts. So what should go on each side? Hash marks on CD. There you go. That is a great drawing of a EF being a perpendicular bisector. Do we see it? Yes. Last question for you, because this will lead into the construction we need to do next. Where EF intersects CD? Name that. Theodore. Midpoint. midpoint. Thank you. That is the midpoint. The bi perpendicular bisector went through the midpoint of CD. Questions on that? I know it's, a, it's two huge words being put together, thrown at you. All right, can we construct it now? Can we find this line do it using our compass and straight edge? And the answer is yes. And even better, I taught it to you already. I taught it to, I don't, this is not anything new I'm going to show you with your compass. I have shown you this already. Because where does it have to go through? The midpoint. We've done that, right? Find the midpoint. I just never named that line because I said it was coming up. Well, it's coming up right now. Uh, can anybody, uh, let's pretend I never was in class for this day. What do I do with my compass? Where do I put it? On one of the endpoints, right? Uh, then there's something special you have to do with it. Make it, make your opening of your compass more than half the length of the line segment. Perfect. And we want to make a, about a half circle size arc. Mm 
Then where do I go? Other end point you weren't on. And how many points of intersection do I want here? Not one, right? That's not going to cut it. I need a place to line up my straight edge. Two spots. And now you draw the line in, and we now have a, a name for that line. All right, when I showed you this a couple days ago to find the midpoint, I said, uh, I'll tell you what about that line later on. Well, it's later on now. There it is. That line now is called a perpendicular bisector. Make sure you show me it's a perpendicular bisector too. All right, got to get in the habit. Right angle, hash marks. You don't, I don't need you to label the midpoint. So that is a called a perpendicular bisector, everybody. Good? Any questions? All right, let's keep going. Let's drop the perpendicular part of this. And let's just go to bisects. So I want to see if you guys can draw this for me first. Can you have a line segment XY that bisects another one called AB? Think you can draw that for me? Two line segments, one bisects the other. Which line, in this case, which line segment is getting cut in half? AB. Okay, can you draw it? Let's see if you can draw this without any assistance here. So I have a line segment called XY that's bisecting another one, AB. Yo, just draw, right? We're drawing, right? Just draw, draw a picture. We're not doing any compass work yet. Draw a picture. Uh, I did not put them as part of the video, no, but I can answer them separately if we get done early. Okay. All right, here's what I'm going to draw. A, B. Now, does it mention anything about being perpendicular? No, so it, X, Y does not need to be perpendicular. If you did it, that's fine. It's fine if you did. It's no problem if you did a perpendicular bisector. But it doesn't mention the word perpendicular, so I want you guys just to take a look what I'm going to do. And again, what's being cut in half? Which line segment here? So my hash mark should be on AB, not XY. XY is doing the cutting. AB is the one being cut in half. Now, again, if you put the two perpendicular, that's fine. I'm just showing you I didn't need to. All right, I can bisect it without being perpendicular. All right, try it again over here now. AB bisects XY. What's being cut in half now? Okay, so technically, you could use the same diagram except what? Put the hash marks on the other segment. Okay, yeah, and that's exactly what we'll do here to save time. I'll use my same diagram. There we go. Okay, so it's important to know what is getting bisected. That's where the hash marks go. Can we do this with a compass and a straight edge now? Ooh. Now I'm going to make you think, honors kids. Going to make you think. I got to bisect AB. So you're thinking, all right, I got to cut it in half. But here's the catch now. That bisector's got to go through X. It's got to go through X. So what do we have that bisects a line? Put your compass point on. Yeah, I'm not changing the rules until the end of this construction. Open it up. More than half the length. Make a half circle size arc. No, not changing it yet. Come on over to B, do the same thing. So you have two points of intersection. Now here's where I need your help. What's up, Kevin? Uh, it depends how crooked. All right, I, I understand, totally understand compasses become loose. You shake a little bit here. But, you know, if you're putting your line way over here and it definitely doesn't bisect, then I got a problem. Yeah. All right, but I understand the little shakes. 
Here's my issue, right? This is our issue. If I lined up your straight edge right now and drew it through, yes, it would bisect, but what is it not following? Well, it'll go through X. But I can still use this construction to help me. How? Does everyone write? There's no way you're drawing that line through because it won't go through X. What do you got, Ben? There you go. Line up your straight edge still. Go ahead, everyone. Line up your straight edge. Put, put the midpoint on AB. Go ahead and mark the midpoint of AB, then draw it through X. Is it okay to still draw the line and then just draw another line over it? That so two, yeah, that's fine with me. Yep, just as long as you know which one. Yeah, that's fine. I don't need a, anything else. I got it. So we line up our straight edge, make a little point where the midpoint is, and then we connect those bad boys with a line. Because it does say construct a line, so we do need a line. This takes me forever. Good. There we go. And what else should go on the diagram? I just bisected it. Uh, hash marks. Hash marks. Yes, Theodore. Um, so when you do the two lines that overlap, it's still over the halfway point, right? Going over the midpoint. Is that correct or no? What do you mean? Oh, I'm sorry. It's you sure? I just answered my answer. Okay. All right. Everyone's good here. So this construction is pretty powerful. This is the third time we've used this construction. We found it to find a midpoint. We just showed perpendicular bisector. Now we did it with just the bisector, not being perpendicular. Unfortunately, though, it doesn't work for everything. I wish. It won't work for everything. Here we go. Let's look at these directions now. Construct a line perpendicular to AB and goes through P. Anybody know why that construction is not going to work we've been using? Well, yeah, it's, it'll give me a perpendicular line, but it won't go through P. All right, and there, I can't, there's no way around it. So unfortunately, that construction, not going to, I can't use it. I need to show you something new. All right, so this construction I'm about to show you will always give you a line perpendicular through a point. No matter where that point is, this construction works. Take your compass, put it on point P, the point we're trying to draw the perpendicular line through. And I will give you some time to do this because this is the tough part here. You need to open up your compass so that when you make your first arc, it intersects this line segment in two spots. It's gonna look like a smile. Okay, that's what I want. It should intersect in two spots. So play around with the opening of your compass so you can get an arc that intersects in two spots. When you get those two spots, just like we've done in the past, put points on those intersections. Put the points on there. So open up your compass so you get two points of intersection. Mark those points. Anybody, have you guys been picking up why I have you mark those points? Because we need to put the thing on there. That's where you're going to put your compass the next two steps are on those points. So the next two steps are put them on each point, make an arc below, and those two should intersect. Okay, so these are where this is where your compass is going to go for the next two steps when you make two arcs that intersect each other. All right, so go to either point. You make an arc. And then you go to the other point and make another second arc that intersects them. And hopefully, if our compass has been shaken like crazy, that intersection point lines up perfectly below P. Hopefully. So this is how to make a perpendicular line through any point. Yes, Abigail. Is there a reason why we can't just line up the straight edge? Uh, not guaranteed to be 90. 89, 80, 91 degrees. Okay, not guaranteed to be 180 or 90 degrees. Uh, anything you want to add to my diagram before I move on? Not here. Box, right? Just one. I just need one. Uh, hey, kid, honors kids, how about hash marks here? No. 
Nope, nothing's getting bisected. It's only, this construction is only for perpendicular lines. Questions? Remember, what, before I go to the next construction, one more time. This construction can be used anytime you want a perpendicular line through any point. Any point. Where did I move the point? To the middle. That's a line, so there's no middle. Where did I move the point? It's on the line. Same construction. That one I just showed you, no matter where the point is, you can get a perpendicular line. Now, you get a little creativity, though. You get a little creativity. That first step, which is make an arc that intersects twice, above, below, I don't care. All right, you want to frown, you want to smile, your call. Okay, your call when it's on the line. So you still got to make an arc that intersects the line twice. Two points of intersection. Now notice I made mine above the line. The last two can go below or it can go above. It doesn't matter. Okay, it doesn't matter where you put the last two arcs, whether it's above or below the line, as long as it's coming from those two points of intersection. And I have a question for some of you because you may be running into a little issue that happens on this construction. Uh, can I ask, because this happens a ton on this one in particular, is anybody's two arcs intersecting right on P? So that you, you don't know where to line. Okay, if that happens, anybody, if that happens, those two arcs that I made in orange, if they actually land on P, go back and make your compass a little wider after the first arc. Okay? So after the first arc, make your compass a little wider, and that won't happen. Yeah, sometimes when you keep your compass opening the same for all three, sometimes it'll land on the point. So you don't have to keep it the same? No, no. The last two, yes. The last two arcs coming from the points of intersection do need to be the same opening, but they do not need to be the same as the first. And make sure we got our right angle symbol. So if you want to make a perpendicular line through any point, it's the same construction no matter where the point is. Questions before we get to the finale? The big finale here. Everyone feel it? Are you, are you getting used to your compasses yet or no? Because we've done a ton of construction so far. And there'll be one on the only one on the uh, test on Monday. Am I going to tell you what it is? Absolutely not. Ready to go? The big finale. The test is Monday. Monday. One construction. At least I told you that. A little spin move right here. All right, the last one. Copy a triangle. Copy a triangle. Now let's break it down a little smaller here. Because copying a triangle seems like I'm asking you to do a ton here. A triangle's made up of three, bless you. A triangle's made up of three sides, right? Yeah, we all know that. The sides are just what for us? Line segments. Line set. That's it. That's all it is. The sides are just three line segments. The very first construction I taught you was what? Copy a line segment. So that's what we're going to kind of do here with a little catch. Is copy these three sides. Copy the three segments. We need something to copy it onto. So can you start me out grabbing your straight edge and doing a nice long ray to copy this triangle on? And I say a nice long ray, I just need that ray to be longer than the longest side of your triangle up here. All right, once you have your ray, your first job, copy one of the sides. For me personally, it does, again, it does not matter which side you copy. For me personally, I always go with the longest side first. That's just how I roll. All right, I always go with the longest side. You do not have to. It'll still work if you follow the directions. 
I always go for the longest side to copy. So I open up my compass to the length of the longest side. I come down here to the end point of my ray and I make an arc through the ray. I do need you to remember though, because at the end here, it's important. Remember that that was the first arc you made. Okay, so remember that's the first arc. Sometimes some kids put a little number one next to it to remind themselves, but I, I need you to remember that's the first arc, all right? All right, copy a second side now. Same way, just go ahead, copy a second side. Same exact way we did the first side. Your call, which one of the two you wanna copy? And you're going to copy it the same way. Just remember that that's the second arc. Keep track of which one was the first and which one was the second, please. That's all I ask of you. So, so far it hasn't been too bad, right? copy two sides. All right, how the heck are we going to make this look like a triangle, right? Because when I say copy the third side, you know, I'm going to have an arc here and there's no way I make a triangle. That doesn't look like a triangle. Everyone ready? Measure your third side. Go ahead. Take your compass and measure whatever side's left over now. And remember, I asked you to remember which arc was first and second. This is why. You are going to put your compass on the first arc you made and make your arc intersect the second one. Okay, so you put your compass on the first one that you made, the intersection of the first one, and make it intersect your second. Now, some of you, I understand, some of you, unlike me, that may not intersect each other. Okay, go back and make that arc longer then. Okay, they will intersect each other. Maybe you made the, that second one too short. Put your compass point on the first one to intersect the second one. No, it's just I just need them to intersect, Kevin. That's it. I just need them to intersect because you're going to be drawing some other segments to that now. How are we doing? Again, if they don't intersect, you might have to go back and make this one longer then. Yep. So is the you only want it to intersect with the second one? Correct. And you'll see why here when, when we connect everything. Well, I, if it hey, Theodore, if it ends up intersecting with the oh, I'm okay with that, but you that's the point I want you to focus on. Okay, if it hey, if it ends up hitting the first one too, fine, but this is what I'm really concerned about. Okay. All right, ready to get your triangle? Everyone ready? Mm -hmm. I already know where one side is going to be. It's right here. It's my long, that's the long, right? That's going to be one side of my triangle. I guarantee that that's the same length. That's going to be one side. Where are the other two going to come from? Go from your end point to the point of intersection. There's the second side. So one side's down here. Second side, and guess where the third side's gonna come in? Here, because I gotta involve that one because that's one of my sides all the way up. Look at you guys. And what I love about this, even though it's a complex, I agree, it's a complex construction, but you know what I love about it? So easy to check if I did it right. What do I mean by it's so easy to check? Go up, remeasure the sides, and make sure one of your sides has that same measure. Okay, very easy to check if we did this right. So open up your compass to a side length, go down to your construction. Does one of my sides have the same opening? And all three should. Very easy to check. All right, copy two segments, 
copy the third one, put your compass on the first arc to intersect your second. Anything else? All right, we are done with unit one then. We are done with unit one. Okay, we are done with unit one. Congratulations. You guys can turn the page in your packet and start working on some of those constructions. A warning, anytime, there, anytime we have constructions as part of the homework, I do not put an answer key up. Because it, how, I don't know how that's going to be useful just seeing my art marks there. Okay, so you will not see an answer key for this homework. But I will certainly go over.